I think for one thing, the doc doctors need to be educated about what causes illness and what makes people sick rather than the symptom. So when you go into an exam room and a kid has asthma, a doctor doesn't generally ask, okay, what are the housing conditions in which you live? Do you live near a freeway? You know, do, you know the, all those kinds of questions, don't, those biosocial questions don't get asked. Um, so I think we have to reorganize the way doctors are trained from a biomedical to a biosocial model. And I think that's obviously a long, a long road, but something that's really important. I just wanted to say, I, I teach at a medical school. It's an osteopathic uh, medical school in Harlem, Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine, and it is institutionally an institution, you know. Um, they, they are, uh, the purpose of the school is to educate uh, young people from underserved communities, such as um, Harlem, the Bronx, the surrounding areas, to work in underserved communities. Uh, and that's, that's a, was, is really what attracted me to the, the school, the mission of it. However, you know, and we try, I think we sort of give lip service to educating doctors to listen more um, and be more compassionate and understand the whole patient. Uh, and, and we try to do that. But we're trying to do it within the existing medical institution and it's, it's sort of contradictory. Uh, I work with the students and I think some of the things that obviously they need to learn about science and biology um, as well as human interaction and how to, I think they need performance. And Susan's done work, which she could speak about, in teaching uh, medical residents about the use of performance. I think we all need training in that, and doctors need it very, very deeply. We sorely need that kind of, so we need people from the outside, like the all-stars, the performance community, to come in and teach us that kind of thing. We, that's not gonna happen from within the institutions themselves. The same, Susan's pointed this out, and so her writings, the same interview model that we've used for like the last 100 years. The, 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 the medical model of the interview, when you come in, what's your chief complaint? What's your history of present illness? Well, I mean, and people don't even do that much, which it would be great, but, but there's much more that could be done. So we need to go beyond those, those limits. Well, I, I just want to second what Jesse had, uh, uh, physician that used to work and do the improv teaching, a, a way of teaching medical doctors to talk to their patients, uh, he said, you know, it's pretty simple. If they just gave fellowships and paid for listening, we'd have the whole thing transformed. <laughs> there's, no, there, there's no support to do it. it the institution is such that that kind of listening activity and doing something different with the medical model right now is, is, is not in existence. And that's why we're giving you the All Stars, <laughs> a program that's near and dear to our hearts <laughs> and one that we think you all should belong to. Um, it's not going to happen because of, I mean, it's not, it's doctors who are locked into, because I feel like having left Kaiser, which is a system unto itself, and then having the experience of the community health clinic and private clinics, there, and seeing the, the, the differences there, it's, what I find helps now is how I bring the family, because I'm a pediatrician, the family and adolescents into the creation of health with me and not see, being seen as a person who has the answers, uh, but asking questions that allows all of us to participate in this because, you know, we have um, the medications or all these new medications are advertised on, on the television and patients know more about this because I don't watch that much. I have to watch just so I can know what the next medication, I skip through the commercials. They come and ask for something that I've never heard of, and then that sparks a conversation about why they think they should have it and what they think is going on. Um, performing. <laughs> I think I have had more conversations with young people about asthma and the environmental effects of uh, where they live and um, school. It's almost like you can't just change one thing, you have to change the whole thing. 
uh, because kids who live in dangerous neighborhoods are not going to go outside and exercise. They have been, it's been taken away from them in the school because they want to give them more academics. And we're seeing the explosion of obesity. And now we found this um, one particular kind of a virus that causes causes the cells, the obese, the fat cells to overgrow or to gain more fat. And now we're, I think where we're headed is a drug that's going to block that. Rather than giving the kids more exercise because these viruses have been around for hundreds of years and all of a sudden now we're focused on this one particular one and obesity. And th this is kind of how we keep doing this sort of thing when, when it takes one question to stop and think, what are we doing together that's creating all of this other stuff? Patch? Yes, I, I think this question doesn't have any use in the corporate medical model, uh, which isn't interested in those things. The, uh, if you look at the statistics, doctors aren't studying primary care, they're studying super subspecialties because the practice of medicine is such a horrible, filthy uh, experience for doctors that they wanna, they wanna have the least connection to the person that they can possibly have and reduce them down to half an organ. And the idea, you know, what, there's no medical system, even in the countries that all pay for care, that have worked out a way for doctors to have enough time to even get the basic street where the patient lives. I mean, and I've been doing a lot of work in Spain and everything's free, but they get five minutes with a patient. It's meaningless. And, and there's no quick, you know, there's a quick drug model, but there's no quick drug model for encouraging wellness. I mean, the do doctors are sick. I mean, there's no, uh, we, we have to actually break out of the system, create Cuban-style medical schools with free education and pay to go to school and with a service ethic when you leave the school, and that you have to demand. The greatest loss of the 20th century in medicine was the house call. You know, the, it was rich. Read William Carlos Williams or any one of a number of other people about the ecstasy of visiting a patient's home. You know, I do those four-hour interviews for me for the intimacy I get and for, I mean, what are you gonna find out a person that where you can talk intelligently about wellness in an hour uh, about who they are and not see their home and not, not be part of it. So we have to have revolution. 